السلام علیکم اینڈ گڈ افٹرنون جنٹل مین ہاؤ ار یو آل وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ سر الحمدللہ سر سٹل پارٹیسپنٹس ار جوائننگ السلام علیکم سر وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ جی عادل ہاؤ ار یو ہاں سر وی ول بی سٹارٹنگ ان ا وائل لیٹ دی ادر پارٹیسپنٹس جوائن اس اوکے جی ابھی دی پاز we will be starting at 5:35 huh okay sir ٹھیک <coughs> ہے Can you please introduce yourself? Yes, Akmal. <clears throat> uh, 
Yes, sir. Akmal, you are new with us, right? Akmal, are you hearing me? <coughs> uh, well, guys, uh, let us start. It's uh, five minutes had been given to you, and I guess the time is over now. We should be starting <clears throat> from IG1. If there is any question, please ask me. Regarding the regarding the IG one, in case if there is any question, please ask me. And uh, regarding your uh, recorded session you will be uh, inshallah getting all the videos by today okay i was quite busy so that is why uh, i could not do it any question guys considering that uh, there is no question from ig1 it means that I am hoping that all the participants are going to get pass in IG in IG one. Yes or no? Hope yes, so. sir. No, no. Yes, uh, someone. Uh, sure, sir. It. Very nice, Hazan. Yes. So just yes, uh, I want to ask one thing. Based on this uh, training session, we are just. I just uh, I want to ask one thing. Sorry for this, sir. Just no. based on this uh, training session, we have I have prepared the notes from our side. So just I want to ask with you that can we use that uh, can we use that note for at the time of examination? Yeah, why not? Why not? You will be having open access to the internet. You will be having access to your notes. Okay, and uh, of course you can you can consult with anything. Okay, and during the uh, in IGC one, which we have discussed. Uh, okay, so if we will face a, a if we will get any issues or any concern, any clarification, so can I get in touch with you? Why not? But before the day of exam. Yes, exact before the day of exam. That I want to. No problem. Before the day of exam, of course, I would be helping you whatever you need. Uh, of course, I will be there. But I just want to mention something over here uh, regarding the exam, because exam would be from IG1. So IG2 has nothing to do with the exam. So regarding IG1, what I want you guys to type something yeah. How will we exam in IG1? That, uh, yes, Saha, I will be, uh, guys, for all those who are asking or who are expecting me to explain IG1, uh, remember on the last day, I will be explaining the complete process of examination. Okay, we will solve even one exam. So that would be helpful for you guys in solving the final exam okay we will take an example exam okay and uh, we will solve that and that example exam would be from the previous exams any of the exam we will be choosing okay so that would be helping you a lot but for now for now because of course you need to prepare your mind for now keep this in mind that you guys are going to have exam from ig1 Okay, what I want you guys type all the topics, only the topics, you can say headings. Okay, only headings in, in one sheet that will be giving you an idea once the exam will come. 
in front of you <clears throat> okay and you are having that typed uh, paper with you so it would be easier for you while reading the exam you can go directly to you can search based on this exam you can search the topic very easily and then you can go over there and you can study about it and you can mention it uh, in the answer so that would be very easier for you okay this is a, a hint and another thing regarding the exam that uh, you don't have to get panic only okay don't get panic but be worried about the exam this is exam i will if i say don't don't get worry about the exam no you must sir, take you must take some stress about it Sorry? hello sir so yes. i i'm asking there will be only ig1 uh, question will be in uh, exam exactly okay exactly there uh, the exam will be only from ig1 you have to prepare ig1 uh, perfectly na sir yeah okay. ig2 is basically for your assignment that what are the practical hazards in the field okay and their controls this is what we are going to discuss in ig2 okay so for exam you will just keep one book in your mind ig1 and for that purpose i have clearly told you spend at least one hour in noting down all the highlights as you want all the highlights the main topics of the book 1 so that once the exam will come you should you would be having a list a topic list where you can have it collaborate or you can have it connect with the exam and it would be very easier for you to go to the point directly okay so i guess uh, all the questions regarding ig1 have been answered now we are going to discuss IG two, IG in IG one we discussed health and safety management system. Yes, Mr. Vijay. Uh, sir, uh, uh, Mr. Badro, I got a message from uh, my in email ID. I don't understand that. Uh, see, uh, there is a message that uh, uh, dear Vijay Kumar, thank you for registering for your NABOSH assessment. Please find attached confirmation to registration to your upcoming assessments. Please read this document carefully and notify your learning partner to, as soon as possible if any errors in your registration, including how your name is shown. If you are okay. sitting, now, what is that? Uh, this is just to give you the confirmation that yes, you are registered and ah. you are uh, eligible for uh, having the exam on. Okay. I guess okay. seven. I guess seven June is the exam date. If okay. I'm not wrong. Yes, sir. This is just a kind of registration message, and they are asking you in case if you are having some kind of error, there would be some some kind of attached file. If there is any error in the name or anything, ah. just notify to your learning partner. Okay. okay, so that we can fix the name issues. Okay, learning partner means in the sense you you, you to you. Yeah, the, tra the training center. Easy words. Yes. Oh, one second. Now, uh, uh, it is downloaded like it, this is shown above. Yeah, it is everything clear, Vijay Kumar. Uh, yeah, everything clear here. Yeah. Nothing, right. nothing uh, name and everything clear. Yeah, exam uh, date, even the result date would also be mentioned over there. Oh, okay. If your name is not displayed correctly, please. Uh, that is what they say, keep saying. Preparing for your exam. Uh, if you are in a Bosch for some reason. Okay, that's uh, they see uh, they mainly concerned about their uh, our name there. No, name is okay yeah. perfect, perfectly okay yeah uh, thank you sir thank you very much no problem okay guys uh, in ig1 what did we discuss we discussed basically our health and safety management system that what is health and safety management system how it works what are the main components and based on each component we discussed that what is our policy planning its implementation and then uh, we are going to audit it and we are going to uh, review it how we are going to do that we have learned everything regarding the health and safety management system in our ig1 okay the main ingredients of 
आई एल ओ ओ एस एच ट्वेंटी जीरो वन आई एल ओ सेफ्टी मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम वी हैव डिस्कस्ड एंड ऑल द टॉपिक्स ऑल द चैप्टर्स वी हैव स्टडीड वर बेसिकली बेस्ड ऑन दैट हेल्थ एंड सेफ्टी मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम विच मीन्स दैट इन आई जी वन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द होल हेल्थ एंड सेफ्टी मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम ओके नाउ इन आई जी टू वी आर गोइंग टू गो फॉर द प्रैक्टिकल प्रैक्टिकल असेसमेंट इन द फील्ड हाउ डू वी डू दैट what does that mean practical assessment in the field the meanings are you what are the common hazards which are present in the field and how do we control them this is what we are going to discuss while discussing the hazards which are present in the field we will be identifying that with those hazards what kind of effect do we get okay for example if we are uh, going to talk about physical and psychological hazard if we are going to talk about uh, noise which is our first hazard today what is noise how do we get injury injuries through the noise or what kind of injuries do we get from the noise and how it affects on our body and how can we protect ourselves okay what is that we will be discussing all these topic in the same way starting from physical psychological hazard will be going to the uh, chemical agents biological agents will be moving to the mechanical and non mechanical hazards of the machine and up to so on i mean we will be discussing all the hazards whatever are possible to be present in the field let us discuss these but before we we continue to physical and psychological hazard i got a message in the chat that name is not correct in the registration uh if someone's name is not correct in the registration remember the instructions are given below that if your name is not correct in immediately contact your learning partner means contact the training center or contact with your coordinator means you have to contact us but not with me because i am your trainer we are having different departments okay whoever would be your coordinator please contact him perhaps you are in the eastern region coordinator would be different you are in the western region coordinator would be different maybe you are in the india or pakistan then coordinator would be different so check where um, i mean who is your coordinator okay and contact him by the way in the earlier times or in the in the earlier sessions like first or second session i had mentioned one name and mobile number kamran and his number that is the main coordinator for all the regions when everything um, i will say when where all the other coordinate coordinators are having their limitations ended up kamran can do something for you okay so contact kamran clear ashfaq not only for yeah, ashfaq for for anyone for anyone if he is having some issue in the name in the date of exam in the registration that i was registered only for ig1 or only for ig2 in case if you are having any issue immediately contact to kamran okay and for that purpose you don't need to uh, ask my permission or you don't need to even inform me immediately contact him okay great so now guys today we are going to discuss our second uh, second uh, unit that is ig2 and in ig2 we are going to discuss our element number 5 which is about physical and psychological health remember you don't in the earlier times you were taking the screenshots of the slides and most of the time you were focusing on the screenshots and not and you were not listening to me now i am asking you don't worry about the screenshots okay you don't have to think about the screenshots if you want to take i am not asking you to uh, to stay stop or i am not asking to uh, i am not going to stop you okay and uh, you can take the screenshots but on the other side now what we are going to discuss we are going to discuss the practical hazards which are usually present in the field and their injuries their effect on us how do we get injured from those hazards 
how what kind of effect do we get from those hazards and finally how can we control those hazards so regarding these three or four main points we are going to discuss our today's session even what are the, what are our learning objective today at the end of this session you will be able to describe the health effect associated with exposure to noise and appropriate control measures in case if we are having noise and we are getting exposed to the noise what we are going to have we are going to have some damage some injury inside our body what kind of injury is that we will see and how can we control this kind of damage how can we protect us then describe the health effects associated with exposure to vibration and appropriate control measures the same thing with the same pattern we are going to discuss it for vibration you know noise and vibrations are almost same just like health and safety in case if vibration is there automatically noise would be there okay because noise would be generated when something gets vibrated so remember vibration and noise these are interlinked you can say and we will be discussing both in the same way then we will be able to describe the health effects associated with ionizing and non ionizing radiation and appropriate control measures that in case if we are working with some kind of radioactive element and radioactive element which are basically emitting the radio waves in case if these pass through these waves pass through our body what are the effect which is occurring on our body some waves are ionizing some waves or some uh, rays are non ionizing these radiations or these rays are having different impact on our body what impacts do we get how we protect ourselves from these impacts we will discuss then the fourth one is describe the cause of work related mental ill health and how the condition can be managed i want everyone to participate with me in this topic when we will be on this topic because everyone has go he must go through this this kind of hazard or this kind of situation that we are having stress depression okay once we are overloaded or once we are having politics around us so remember i uh, this kind of stress this kind of hazard basically work related stress for mental ill health is basically a killing ill health issue it kills human uh, most of the time people they get the heart attack even just because of these issues what are these we will be discussing them then we will be describing the risk factors and appropriate control measures for violence at work if you are working as a cashier if you are working as a security guard for example if you are working as a safety officer who is basically inducting everyone who used to come in the office then <clears throat> because you are dealing with the people sometime when you are having the authority to say yes or to say no if you say no to the people sometime people they don't like that and there would be a violence against you so some people they are have they are having a risk of violence while they are at workplace what are those risks we will discuss and we will try to control them next is we will be describing the effects of substance abuse on health and safety at work and control measures to reduce such risk sometime when people they are um, working on the job site two or three scenarios are possible regarding the substance abuse perhaps this is your medicine or drug given by you uh, sorry given by a doctor to you and you are taking it but because you know that once i take i will be sleeping and my boss is not going to ask me anything because he knows that i am taking the drugs and i start misusing it whenever i come to the office i i i get sleep and just tell him that i took the drugs because now it's a medical issue given by the doctor the medicine has been given by the doctor so i cannot ask you okay so 
there are misuses in some scenario we are having some substances which are containing alcohol on the job site pyridine is one of them spirit is one of them so when we are having these um substances on the job site these can be misused okay and of course once these would be misused different hazards would be uh, arising after the misuse of these substances we will be discussing about these hazards as well by today so first thing come first noise what is noise first of all we need to have an understanding about the noise i start teaching at 5:30 pm every day in the beginning you start liking my voice time uh, passes on we take break we continue the class we take break we continue the class at the at around 9:15 9:30 people this don't they start hating my voice why because now it is becoming noise to you okay noise is anything sorry no sir no sir <laughs> good it, it means you are you are with me very nice okay guys I noise <laughs> very nice noise is anything any sorry and not anything noise is any voice which you don't like okay sometime the music becomes the noise for you in the beginning it is good for you you uh you like to hear the music but perhaps one hour two hour depending upon person to person okay it depends upon totally person to person some uh, some people they they can listen the music up to 8 hours even so it depends upon person to person i'm just giving the uh music as an example that sometime we are having music that usually we listen just to have some kind of relaxation but after some time the same music become noise for us any unwanted sound any like unpleasant alarm sound. in the morning sorry alarm in the morning like very nice alarm in the morning very nice yeah no one likes that no one likes that right yes sir. okay so these are basically the example of noises question is who are the affected workers me you people around us who among us can be affected let us see construction workers workers who are working with plant machinery they are having the effect of noise those who are using the concrete breakers jack hammers right they are having once they are using the jack hammer dug 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 this kind of sound of course gives them noise and uh, it gives them stress we will see what kind of effect we are getting then uniformed services what is the meaning of uniformed services military guys those who are working uh, with bullets and bombs right small arms and artillery entertainment sector workers now see entertainment sector who comes in the uh, entertainment sector your rjs your djs those who are basically it seems that they are playing the music they are enjoying the music but they are at the risk of being affected with the noise they are listening loud music then manufacturing sector workers in which we are having industrial machinery industrial machinery which is being run where we are having the different products generated then call center staff those who are all the time using the headsets and there is acoustic uh, sound sometimes uh, coming over there and that can give them shock they are listening sometime uh, pulses of sound high noises okay there are basically two kind of noises one is uniform noise okay one is pulse what are these we will discuss so ma mainly mainly these are the guys construction workers uniform services entertainment sector manufacturing center call center staff these are those guys who are at high risk of being affected by the noise what kind of effects do we get because of noise 
here there are some effects which are temporary for example if you are having a cracker blast closer to you for example uh, as as i know the culture of india and pakistan is almost same if in case if you are having the marriages or some kind of function is there people they are having the crackers or uh, fireworks is there so if we are having crackers that is being blasted closer to me for a very short time you would lose your hearing right okay th those are basically temporary effects when for a very short time you are hearing a uh, a sudden loud noise okay that basically shifts your uh, hearing ability then at that time temporarily you lose your hearing ability what is that we will discuss in in temporary loss in temporary effect you reduce your hearing ability in which we are having temporary threshold shift usually you are listening the sound in let's say let's say 0 uh, db sound you can listen but after shift of your hearing you can you are unable to hear the 0 db sound now your 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 threshold is shift up to 10 db so sounds which are lesser than 10 db you might not be able to hear okay why because that is beyond your capacity okay sometimes we are having a ringing in ear that is we call temporary tinnitus you are having the bells in your ear this is what we call tinnitus this is sometimes temporary sometimes this is permanent and uh, next is permanent we are having tinnitus continuous hearing uh, sorry continuous ringing of bell in the ears noise induced hearing loss slowly slowly on day by day you are hearing the loud noise on daily basis because you are hearing loud noise daily basis your threshold is being shifted up to uh, let's say from 0 to 10 0 to 20 0 to 30 now you cannot hear the sound or the noise or whatever you call it lesser than 30 db so whoever will be talking to you he might have to shout closer to you so that you can hear uh, you can hear him why because at this at this stage you are having your threshold shifted permanently up okay how it how does it occur we will be learning it over here and over here then the next is inability to hear vehicles warnings conversations sometimes because of this reason people they are unable to hear the vehicles who are coming from back side if the person or the people who are working closer to the heavy equipment people who are working closer to those mechanical tools which are powered mechanical tools and generating high noise you if you want to talk to them first thing they will never be giving you positive or polite response why because all the time they are under stress they are absorbing the noise okay so they would be having stress all the time okay one thing and that is why they want to relieve that stress which commonly or sometimes you call it frustration ah huh? this is sometimes happen and all those guys who are working with the high noise tools equipment or machinery or plant what happen they are unable to sometime hear the sound of the vehicles which are coming from the back side or from their blind blind spot they cannot hear the warning alarms okay so that is why we are having strobe light so they can see them and sometime they are unable to conversate with you they cannot talk with you okay and they cannot listen the conversation until or unless you don't shout in front of them so these are the possible effect of noise exposure on our body basically what happens how do we hear the noise give me a minute how do we hear the noise usually the sound waves are coming from outside 
and this is the outer part of your ear which you can see this is basically the main receiver it receives the waves and streamlines them and send them inside okay it comes to the auditory canal and then reach to your eardrum which is the first internal ear organ which faces the outer sound it transfers the sound to the three bones which are hammer anvil and stirrup so sound will reach to these and it will be reaching over here once it reaches to stirrup there are some sensors and these sensors will be transferring the sound to the main point which is cochlea okay cochlea is the one which is having some sensors over there okay which which are uh, which are those sensor which are sensing the no noise or sound and sending it to nerve fibers so that these uh, noise and uh, sorry these noise waves which had been senses can be decoded and over here the message will go to brain and brain will decode those messages and then we will be having an understanding that what are the sound or noise which is coming to us okay this is the way we are listening usually guys these are this is the internal structure or this is the you can say microscopic picture of your cochlea which is having sensors as you can see these are the sensors okay once or whenever the noise comes okay and it touch these sensor what will be happening all of these will move right or left or will be bearing some kind of uh, change or deformation would be there what will be happening this is basically the deformation or the pattern of moving right left right left that would be sensed by our brain and this is our normal structure of human what happens in case if you are having high noise pulses or continuous high noise that noise basically generates vibration over here in these right or left which we just spoke about so what will be happening with the vibration okay these are starting these sensors these started getting damage once these started getting damage and your threshold gets shift it will be like this now because all or more of the sensors are broken and you are having very less sensor to sense the noise so that is why you will be sensing only high pulses or high uh, value of noises you can only sense those noise which are having the high values okay and less sound level or low sound levels low dbs you would not be able to hear because you don't have sensors for for the detection of low dbs okay so in in this way from this to this this transformation is because of hearing the high noise level or staying in the high noise level continuously or sometimes if we are having pulsative sound the sound which is coming normally and suddenly there is a pulse this pulse basically badly affect these or damage or injure these sensors okay and in this way the people who are hearing the loud noise only basically their internal ear or the sensors are like this if you are young maybe you would be having the recovery of these sensors but if you are old perhaps you cannot get them recovered okay so this is the effect of sound on our body or our, on our uh, ear basically now here are here are some of the terminologies which we are going to learn one thing is what we call sound pressure guys the question is where we are going to use this information when you will be having noise survey
okay if you are having if you will be having nice survey during the nice surveys you will be using these terminologies okay so uh, what are the terminologies sound pressure the air pressure of sound waves moving through the air which is expressed in decibel the air pressure once the waves will be coming to your ear it will be pushing the air inside because air will be pushed inside that would be generating some kind of vibration in your eardrum and then it reaches to your cochlea so this the pressure of this air is basically the sound pressure which is usually expressed in decibels which is the unit of sound decibel is the unit of sound pressure level which is re related to the loudness that how loud the sound would be frequency frequency is basically the number of pressure waves per second from or through one point once waves are coming okay and these are moving let's say from this side to this side we consider that we are having one ear one receiver over here how many waves are going to pass from this point in one second this is what we call frequency okay and wave is this is from this point to this point this is one wave this is second wave this is third wave in the same way so how many waves are passing through this point in one second that is the frequency there is something some kind of noise level we are measuring we call it a weighting and we are measuring we call it c weighting what is a weighting noise level a weighting noise level is sound pressure level corrected to match human hearing sensitivity the noise which comes smoothly okay which comes smoothly of course i cannot make it make smooth uh, waves which comes smoothly and which is going to be detected by you which are going to re we are going to relate them with human hearing sensitivity those are a weighting and for a weighting if the value is mentioned in a so you will hear or you will see this kind of unit would be mentioned in front of like 20 decibel a what is a a is basically a weighting for human c weighting c weighting would be dbc like 20 dbc what is c c represent the pulsing sound or impulse noise just like a bomb blast just like a cracker okay you are having smooth waves suddenly there is a cracker which blasts over here so we will be having a pulsating sound or uh, sound or one impulse would be there this is this is when we measure these we measure usually in dba when we measure this we measure it in c i hope so that is clear yes sir okay thank you now there are different decibel levels of the sound and uh, what is there what kind of sound we are having for example here it is mentioned uh, for example here it is mentioned uh, the units at 0 dba which is the faintest audible sounds okay if you talk to each other in your ears okay then this is this the value of that is 0 dba in case if we are having 20 to 30 dba the sound or the noise level you can see you can feel that would be in the quiet library okay 50 to 60 is your usually conversation sound which we are having right right now 65 to 75 loud radio if you are running the radio and loud noise is the uh, sorry loud sound is there 
if you are having 90 to 100 that is the sound of power drill and 140 that is basically jet aircraft taking off and you are standing 25 meters away from that jet so these are different noise levels in units in numbers and here are the examples from our practical life that what kind of noise level gives us what kind of feelings now where we are in our industry we will have to focus from here to here while conversation in case if we are having loud if radio if loud radio is giving 65 to 75 it means that power drill is giving us something more than that it means that circular saw is over there which can give us not exactly not equal to maybe more than this but perhaps less than this but almost in this range okay so these are the point of concern for us how let us see the two factors which determine the degree of harm are one is noise level one is duration of exposure what is the noise level in dba or in dbc if you are having a high noise level of course we will have more damage in case if we are having less noise level of course we will have less damage the next is duration of exposure the more the duration of exposure is the more the time you are staying in the area of noise okay the more the time you are staying in the area of noise the more you will be getting hearing damage okay if you stay there for less time of course you will have less damage or less injury guys a noise assessment is undertaken to measure noise levels and duration of exposure what do we do we have to take a noise assessment this is our usual procedure most of you guys are doing doing this your company is asking you or this is your job requirement to go and to survey for noise level for that purpose if you are having one big area of uh, workshop or fabrication shop you get enter from one side and you take the survey you start measuring the noise level in different areas okay and then you identify where we are having more noise or where we, what are the hot spots and what are the normal areas okay so this is what we call a noise assessment is undertaken to measure noise level and duration of exposure over here closer to this hot spot how many workers are working over there and what about their exposure rate on daily basis how many hours they are getting exposed with this noise level or this noise hazard then based on this this is then used to make an estimate of workers personal exposure to the noise which is i just have told you first we make a survey we identify where we are having high noise areas and then we use this for the workers personal exposure to noise then once we get some numerical values that we are having high noise exposure over here for all the workers who are working here and those who are working in this area they are having less noise exposure then this survey or the, these values personal exposure is then compared to the legal standard what are legal standard we are going to discuss okay that we for example on daily basis one of our guy he is being exposed to 75 dba and in some scenario he get exposed himself with 130 db c on routinely on routinely basis and it is the routine so what we have to do we need to compare these values which we got from these surveys okay we will compare these values with the legal standard that what legal standard is asking us if legal standard is asking us that 75 dba is nothing no problem so we are working in the safe zone 
if legal standard says that 75 db is not a safe zone and you have to take some action then we will be taking some action regarding that what kind of action we will see in the same way same is for 130 dbc if we are having pulsating noise or pulsating sound now till now this point is clear yes sir okay yeah it's clear okay great simple words we perform the noise survey we measure the value of noise we compare it with the legal standards and by the way who sets the legal standard sometimes we are taking the information from international bodies sometime your client sometimes your internal procedure tells you that what should be the value okay and we will follow the standard which is more stringent we will go with that for example the international standard says international standard says 85 dba okay but your internal standard says 75 so you will go with your internal standard okay which one will be more stringent we will choose to use that next is personal exposure noise there are there is something as i uh, earlier explained you daily routinely exposure of noise which we call uniform noise okay and there is something which we call pulsating noise what is that let us start discussing these one by one if we talk about personal noise exposure the daily personal exposure which can be explained or which can be represented as personal exposure daily personal exposure of loudness okay daily personal exposure of loudness is a worker's calculated eight hours noise exposure if a person is standing here and he is having some noise level closer to him which is higher than his capacity in eight hours or more than eight hours how much he would be absorbed okay when we talk about daily personal exposure it means within eight hours how much noise he is going to absorb workers exposure to single peak of exposure which is impulsive noise okay is also measured if we are having pulsating noise or impulse noise we have to measure because this is the peak sound pressure maximum sound pressure of that machinery of that equipment of that plant so we will be we will be exercising to identify the uniform noise level as well as the pulsating noise level we will be measuring both okay that what is that so in this way we will be having an idea with that exposure level we are going to compare it with the legal standard noise exposure standards are subject to national laws around the world depends upon the national laws basically there are no harmonized or same laws every country is having their own law that is why i asked you to follow the most stringent one okay in uk these are laid out in the control of noise at work regulation 2005 this is the regulation if you go to hse.gov.uk okay and over there you in the search bar you mention this one or just go to google and you mention this one the underlined line if you mention it you will be having a complete regulation opened in front of you and this regulation will be explaining different machines different pulsing so noise and the comparison of noise with the practical activities and here in nibosh they are following european directives you will follow the more stringent level of uh, whatever the procedures are in getting implement on your workplace 
Now, there is something which we call lower exposure action value. In case if we have been given some targets that this is a uh, lower exposure value, this is a higher exposure value, there is something which we call exposure action value the value at which you need to take some action. Uh, sorry, can you repeat what's mean EAV? Exposure action values. Exposure action values. This is E A V. In case if we are having E A V's, which is usually we are saying lower E A V's, lower E A V E A V's are those where you need to take some action. For example, a daily or weekly personal noise exposure of eighty decibel A, a machine which is generating a sound noise of 80 dBA. Let's say it was generating 75 dBA. Okay, that is normal, no problem. If it starts generating 80, 80 dBA, at this 80 dBA, then you what you will do, you must take some action because if it reaches to 80, it can reach to 85 as well. Okay, so 80 dBA is the lower noise level where we, you have to take some action action could be providing the providing the people with the ppes for example we will by the way discuss that how we are going to control the noise okay this is for lower exposure action value in the same way we are having a peak sound continuous sound and suddenly there is a peak sound for this peak sound, in case if you are having a peak sound pressure of 135 decibel C, this is for impulsive noise. Sudden, there is a there is an impulse. This these are the values for lower ex exposure action value. Excuse values. me, sir. Yes, uh, please. DBA and uh, DBC different between. DBA is for human, okay, as I have explained, C is for impulsive noise. Here we discussed this. Human hearing sensitivity, okay, and for impulsive noise, DBC. Okay. Okay. Now, we are going to discuss the upper exposure action value. Upper exposure action value, which is 85 dBA, and everyone knows that the noise level at which you need to protect yourself is 85 dBA. The statement is wrong. You start protecting yourself from 80 dBA. At 85 dBA, you stop the job until unless you don't take some necessary action to control the noise or to control or to protect your hearings. If we talk about EAV, that is basically the first exposure limit you will hit is the exposure action value. Okay, this is lower one, this is upper one. After upper one, you must stop the job and control it. Otherwise, people will start having stress and they will start losing their hearings. In the same way, if we are having a peak sound pressure of 137 dBC for impulsive noise or impulse noise, this is your upper exposure action value, UEAV. Okay, now limit values. What are limit values? Limit values are those values at which you must do something to protect your employee. By the way, over here, we are doing that. A daily or weekly personal ex uh, noise exposure, 87 dBA, 
a peak sound pressure of 140 dBc. In case if you hear these, this is the maximum limit. For that day, you don't have to do the job. Leave the area. Where employees exposure varies markedly from day to day, the weekly personal ex noise exposure can be used in place of daily personal exposure standard. In case if on daily basis, your noise, if you are the person who moves around the site, okay, who moves around the site, in some area we are having the hot spot of high noise. In some area we are having low noise. Okay, so in case if you are the one who moves around the site, okay, you we usually in those scenarios we don't count the exposure on daily basis. Then we count the exposure on weekly basis. Guys, remember whenever we are going to do the noise survey, mostly we are focused on this and this. Actually, you should be focused on these points, the first action values where you do something to reduce the noise or otherwise to protect yourself. So in case if we are having 80 dBA on daily personal exposure limit, okay, what we have to do, we have to carry out noise assessment. Okay, okay. noise assessment noise for the people, sorry, people, employees okay we okay. must provide we information must. instruction and training to all the people in case if we are providing the ppe how they are going to use the ppe when do they have to use the ppe we must instruct them about the use of ppe we must provide them the information using some kind of sign boards that PPE is mandatory beyond this point then make hearing protection available this is what I just have explained that hearing protection is required over there wherever we have mandatory requirement we need to provide it to all the workers free of cost this is when we have 80 decibel A. In the exam, if you have been given one scenario and in the scenario, the question is about 80 dBA, then you will take these actions. In case, if we are having 85 dBA, then we will take these actions. What are these actions? These actions are carry out the noise assessment, to reduce noise exposure by engineering means as low as reasonably practicable. Engineering means technically solve the issue. Do you remember when we got the example, when we discussed the example of generator? How we can apply the engineering controls over there? Silencer. Do you remember? Barrication. Complete barrication. Barrication. So that people should not be getting exposed over there. Either we will eliminate, we will replace, uh, we will take the electricity if not possible. We will change the generation. That was, that, do you remember? That was the elimination. Sometime elimination is not possible because you have to have the machine on the job site. Right? All then alternative should be there. In case if alternative is not, not there, then do something by engineering means. Over here, because noise level is more than 80, is more, more than 80 dBA. Now we reach to upper exposure action value. So we must control it technically. If noise is still above 85 dBA, even after applying the engineering means, then mandatory hearing protection zone should be defined. Again, information, instruction, and training should be given. Provide hearing protection and enforce its use. Health surveillance. People should be called to have the health surveys on time so that we can identify if the person was 
if the person is having hearing issue or he was having hearing issue how do you, how do we know about that usually whenever you join any organization or project you submit your mfc medical fit certificate that i am medically fit if or while working with you if something happens to me then you are responsible we are talking to employer that you are responsible because i am providing my medical fit certificate that i am medically fit and i am coming to your job site in case if something happens to me maybe because of the work process because of the work equipment because of the workload then you are responsible clear guys yes no yes sir okay clear clear next is expire limit value which is again daily expire limit immediate prevent the expire and reduce it below the limit value we are having 87 85 80 if we reach to 87 noise level is over here immediately move it down below 85 bring it down otherwise stop the job by the way at 85 you stop the job until unless you don't have proper ppe and this is the minimum requirement the elv is an uh, absolute ceiling above which expire must not go this is the final value expire limit value after which if the limit it is just like the ceiling of your room where the limit is ended up of your room if you go beyond this limit you will break the roof simple okay so this is the final limit of your room the ceiling just like that 87 is the ceiling limit after which you cannot get yourself exposed with that hazard whatever that hazard would be noise or vibration clear guys here is one assignment number 1 till now i have not submitted the report to my management regarding ig1 assignments and no one has i will not say no one so many of you guys have not submitted your assignments yet yes mr fezan yeah, this sorry sir just why because of the reason that we have to go on the job okay and we have to continue our job for 8 hours so due to that we have prepared okay but we are got not that. able to submit got to that. you got that fizan now now if you listen to me carefully you will realize that it is a matter of only 5 minutes to solve one assignment for example if you just if you just start reading this question the question is a noise survey has been carried out and there are two work areas of concern consider that you are having a machine shop or fabrication shop in which you conducted a noise survey okay now machine shop is having noise level 83 dba let's say over here wood working area let's say over here is having a noise level 90 dba throughout the shift now what actions discuss the action that would need to be taken in each area what you have to do you have to carefully read the sentence you have to carefully identify as i explained you that what actions are required actions are required at what time if we have 83 dba if we have 90 dba let us move back if we are having 90 dba means we are working more than 87 means we are working more than 85 dba so these are the actions which are required 
So cannot you write these actions on how much time would be taking five minutes? We just have to mention, for example, you'll be mentioning that woodworking area Okay, and you will be copying and pasting all these. Next is, uh, sorry, next one was 83 DBA, machine shop, which is more than 80 DBA, but less than 85 DBA. So what action is required? These actions are, are required. And you'll be copying and pasting this, or you'll be typing it. And one assignment is not going to take more than five minutes. You just have to be smart. And by the way, whatever the assignment has been given to you, all those assignments could have been solved in the same smart way. So it is up to you how smart you are. Now, if it's unclear, if I, if I ask you now, can you solve the assignments? So you should have said, yes, sir, we can solve it. How much time it will be taking? It will be taking only five minutes for one assignment, but that will be giving you the idea that practically, practically, if we are having the surveys, then practically what email I will be writing, what a reference I will be using so that I can convince my senior management. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. So, these are basically the points of communication. It's up to you. How do you take them? You guys, next is, what is the time? 6.43. Why we did not take the break? No one even notified me. Okay, guys, let's have a break. Huh? Break of Salah should have been taken like 20 minutes earlier. Okay, guys, let's have a break. And after the break, we will be starting from the same point. Huh? It's 6.43 with me. Uh, we will be taking only 20 minutes break maximum. We will be back at 7.05.